Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Uh, this, Jamie, directed at you from Dan in Dallas off the Gates Flooring Center chat line. Chuck, talking about the, quote, what if game, unquote. What if Jamie had gotten new pins this season? Do you see any blame there? <laughs> uh, oh, man. If, um, if, if the, we're relying on the Tech baseball team, my pens mm-hmm. are a factor in us winning or losing. Mm-hmm. Man, we're we're in trouble. But um, um, I, I I do know that I am going to um, move move on from this set of pens at the end of the year. Okay, we're glad to we're glad to hear that. And and, and I'm sure Dan and Dallas, among others, uh, would be glad to contribute to the cause um, if that if that's necessary. Yeah, yeah, my two jobs pay me, you know, enough to afford a pack of five pens or okay. ten pens or whatever. So okay. I appreciate it, but no, I can get that myself. No Thanks. GoFundMe, okay? Yeah, no, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, Paul says this, I'll throw shade towards Jamie. It's his fault. Wow. <laughs> Well, they're, they're, they're quick to come after you, Jamie. I, they, I mean, they are the same ones from last year. They are not. They are not new. And the reason, honestly, I mean, that factors in is there's a couple of them that eh, they don't write as bright as they used to. And uh-huh. so that, well. I, I, I can't stand that. So. <clears throat> okay. Hey, the uh, Red Raider basketball team uh, got a commitment yesterday, um, and this young man's a freshman, Jamie, and he is somebody that had committed to Michigan uh, way back in the day, but um, after the um, dismissal of Jawan Howard, he decommitted. He'd actually signed with Michigan, uh, got himself out of his uh, national letter of intent with the new coach, Dusty May, so that he could go elsewhere. And uh, he is a four-star point guard, and he is now uh, committed uh, to Texas Tech University. He's uh, from Atlanta. His dad played a lot of basketball in Europe, so he is a, a well-traveled young man. Um, and uh, so that's uh, that's exciting um, that you're able to bring in somebody that can shoot the ball and and uh, apparently has dead-eye shooting. We'll see. Once you get to the Big 12 level, it becomes a little bit different competition, obviously. Um, but but that's a, that's a good get for you, I think. With uh, with Christian Anderson uh, coming to uh, to the Red Raiders and uh, and Grant McCaslin's team. Yeah, hope, hopefully that's good news. You know, I love love uh, having freshmen. Uh, at the same time, it always makes me wonder a little bit about things like are you, you've now signed two freshmen, and that's kind of not what college basketball teams are doing a whole lot of. And so, does that mean that you're not hitting on who you wanted in the in the more veteran transfer portal market. And so you're going with freshmen and, and to kind of fill the holes or, um, or because it feels like we still need a few more guys, right. That yeah. are ready to play and contribute and be great right away. You know? So, um, yeah. So I, I wonder about that a little bit, but you know me, I'm, I, I, I like bringing in freshmen. So that's great. seems like a good get. Um, also doesn't you know gives me a little bit of pride to hear that we i just assume outbid michigan for his services so that's good well it kind of makes me frankly it makes me wonder um how did he fit with dusty may's offense versus what he was going to fit with with Jawan howard you know how much how much difference was there um just in, in reading an article about michigan this morning they they had one spot left but he's and they've added a bunch of guards. So, you know, maybe maybe he wasn't the type of player that Dusty May wanted, and maybe that wasn't the type of setting or uh, offense that he had envisioned when he committed to uh, to Michigan under Jawan Howard. Um, and, and maybe there's just a better opportunity here uh, to play more. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, and and that that may be true. That may be true, but um, it, it's again, I, I think it's great when you're bringing in freshmen because we just don't do much of that anymore, and nobody does. I'm not saying just us, but nobody does. Right. It's uh, and, it's the win now mentality that that, that we've got. Uh, right. So I'm I'm a I'm a fan of that. You know, um, I think um, I think the other freshman that they signed was more of a project, more of a guy that. Uh, I don't know that the, there'll be a, a real high expectation from this season. Um, I mean, you got to have some people to, to practice with. You got to have some people to to develop. Um, and uh, you know, I think there's still. What did we see last year? I mean, he was adding people up to the to the very end. So um, I guess we just have to uh, trust and wait, right, to see how this mm-hmm. how this roster develops. It seems like. We're seeing more activity uh, or earlier this year than we did uh, last year. Of course, last year, I mean, at this point in time, he's ba- barely a month into a new job, you know, and trying to get settled and trying to get a staff hired and all those all those kinds of things. So, um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that works out uh, for the uh, for the Red Raider men's basketball team. But, you know, on one hand, you go, ah, it's only May. But then on the other hand, you go, well, oh. <laughs> You know, six months from now, they'll be hooping it up, and so sure, you'd, sure. you'd like to have everybody in place pretty quick in the summer so that you can, you know, take advantage of summer workouts and um, you know things along those lines so that they can play together and and uh, and you know get acclimated to you know Coach McCaslin's system and what he expects from his guys and all those all those things. So you'd like to get everybody in as uh, as quickly as you can. So. We'll see, we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens there, as far as that uh, Red Raider basketball roster is concerned. So, I don't know. Um, somebody says this. Yeah, I, I saw this too. I saw a couple a couple things. I don't know if I gave you his numbers. Um, his numbers in high school were that he was five eleven, uh, but apparently he's still growing. He's up to six one. So I don't know what he is in his flat feet versus his sneaks, but he's somewhere between five eleven and six one. But I think the big thing is is that he can run the show and shoot the ball. Now can he do it at the next level, the Big 12 level? Okay. So we'll see. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Going to start us off in 1943 for the fastest nine-inning American League Baseball night game. <clears throat> Why we needed all the monikers, I don't know, but he got all of them. It was 89 minutes long. Chicago White wow. Sox beat the Washington Senators one to nothing. Do you have it in your notes that I once went to a game at Royal Stadium where they didn't turn the lights on for a night game? I do not. Okay. I don't remember that story. Okay. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it, it wasn't that quick, it was... but it was quick. Wow. <laughs> 1952, Brooklyn Dodgers score 15 runs in their first inning and beat the Cincinnati Reds 19 to 1. Mm. Not much production after the first. When you score 15 in the first, you don't need a whole lot afterwards. Plan not to lose from then on, right? 1968, Billy Williams of the Chicago Cubs sets an outfielder record for playing in 695 straight MLB games. 1977, in the 102nd Preakness. Seattle Slough wins with a time of 1 minute 54.4 seconds. 1996, Ken Griffey Jr. at 26th is the 8th youngest to hit 200 career home runs. And in 2015... Texas Tech stayed alive in the Big 12 championship play with an 8-1 to victory over number 2 TCU while eliminating the Horn Frogs. The Red Raiders used 11 base hits, 2 home runs, and a dominating pitching performance from senior right-handed pitcher Corey Taylor, who tossed 5 scoreless frames, allowing only 4 hits with 2 strikeouts and a walk. We could use a lot of that today. We could. I was thinking the same thing. That was 2015, Jeff? Correct. Yeah, you would lose to Baylor the next day and your season would end. We don't want any of that. (laughs) 
yeah but it was it was good to beat the horns that day no doubt mm-hmm uh, it is national. Well, remember yesterday was uh, Pick Strawberries Day, right? Well, today <clears throat> is Strawberries and Cream Day, which is you know fitting, and also Eat More Fruit and Vegetables Day. What's What's your take on the cream aspect of it? The strawberries and cream. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I've ever had strawberries and cream. What What ex- actually is the cream? Yeah, it's it's not like whipped cream. It's like a. Mm-hmm. I said I think it's just just cream. Well, it could also be ice cream. Well, if it's I'm a huge. That's my favorite dessert: strawberries and ice cream, vanilla yeah. ice cream. Happy birthday, Kansas killer Daryl Dora turns thirty nine today. He's just 39. 39. Josh Allen, 28. Mr. T, 72. Josh Hamilton, 43. Bobby Cox, who probably just got ejected again, is 83. And Dave Wonstadt is 72. Which Josh Allen? Josh Hamilton from Texas Tech. I mean, from uh, the Texas Rangers. Josh Hamilton. I thought you said Josh Allen. I did, too. Oh, no, yeah, Josh Allen and Josh Allen. Uh, Josh Allen from your Buffalo Bills. Okay. Because there's a defensive end for the Jags. It's Josh Allen, too. And on this day in 1901, Connecticut becomes the very first state to pass a law regulating motor vehicles limiting their speed to 12 miles per hour in cities and 15 on the county roads. Speed limits had been set earlier in the United States for non-motorized vehicles. In 1652, the colony of New Amsterdam, now known as New York, issued a decree stating that no wagons, carts, or sleighs shall be run, rode, or driven at a gallop. All the risk of incurring a fine starting at two pounds Flemish, or about $150 today. And that is this day. In sports history. All right. <laughs> All right, it's time for our lucky, lucky local winning word. We'll give you a word. You go to double t ninety seven three dot com for that and enter it in. It's uh, coming to you from double t ninety seven three and the home zone. All you have to do is enter this word, and you could win some cash today, like our friend Matt Baker did last Thursday. He won five hundred dollars. Today's winning word at six forty five is tigers. Tigers, T-I-G-E-R-S. Go to dot com for that and enter that, and you could win some cash today. If you do, we will let you know, okay? So go to dot com for that. Um, all right, so one of the recipes I see here for strawberries and cream includes Greek yogurt. Um, strawberries and cream is a traditional Mexican dessert recipe made with sweet condensed milk, whipping cream, sour cream, and strawberries. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of out. As I'm looking at it, it doesn't look very appetizing to me. <laughs> what is the tradition of strawberries and cream? Strawberries and cream were served all spectators at the first Wimbledon, right? Yeah, you know, they what? still do. They still do. Yep. 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 What is strawberries and cream made of? Yeah, it's... It just doesn't. It doesn't look like what we would like to like it to look like, like what you said, strawberries and ice cream. I'm with Jamie on that. <clears throat> I also, also used to like at the uh, 32 Flavors place or 31, whatever it was, um, a uh, strawberry shake, Jamie, with real vanilla ice cream and real strawberries chopped up in it. To make it a mm-hmm. strawberry shake, as opposed to strawberry ice cream with a strawberry shake. It just tasted different. Tasted better. Oh, I didn't know that anybody made a strawberry shake with strawberry ice cream. I thought it was always st- real strawberries and vanilla ice cream. No, you have to ask for it okay. that way. You have to ask for it to be a strawberry shake. Please use the real vanilla ice cream and real strawberries. May cost well, a, you a, lot of place, a lot of places that you get shakes don't even have ice cream. True. No, I mean, anymore. don't have strawberry yeah. ice cream. Yeah. Anymore, right. 
Uh, this from Sentex Hank. Weird, random thought listening to this day in sports history. It isn't really relevant, but I don't think Rod Carew gets enough credit for being a great hitter. That is a weird thought, Sentex Hank. And I think, you know, Rod Carew in his day got plenty of, I think he got plenty of credit. I mean, I remember yeah. Rod Carew being an everyday player for the Minnesota Twins and the Angels, and every announcer that came up, well, here's Rod Carew. He can get a hit just climbing out of bed. He's the he's a guy maybe when we mention guys that um, today's baseball wouldn't love that maybe gets forgotten. We always mention Tony Gwynn. He's uh-huh. a great singles and doubles hitter. Mm-hmm. But Rod Carew was very similar to that, just kind of before Tony Gwynn's time. Yeah, because he didn't he didn't hit a lot of home runs. No, he's, just, he's my he's he's my favorite batting stance to emulate. Right. Uh, Robert says this. I hate today's pace for Major League Baseball games. You don't have time to go to the restroom. Mm. Yeah. And really considered that. Well, you can That's hit. That. It is interesting that it goes so fast. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, you can always, if you're watching, you can always hit pause, right? You can hit pause True. and get, get, get caught up on it, you know. Just, you know, hit hit pause. Uh, somebody says this. Carew won umpteen batting titles. Yep, no, di- no doubt. He was an 18-time All-Star. He was a seven-time batting champion. He was the American League uh, Most Valuable Player in 1977. Rookie of the Year, Roberto Clemente Award. His number was retired by the Twins and by the Angels. And he's in both the Twins and the Angels Hall of Fame and... Of course, in the Baseball Hall of Fame, 90.5% of vote on the first ballot. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie, we uh, got the report yesterday that one of the cranes was uh, being dismantled. Uh, I'd say coming down. But if you say coming down about a crane, kind of sounds like it's that's not good news. Like a crane is toppling or falling over or coming down uh what they did uh are in the process of taking down one of the cranes over at jones stadium there's still a couple of them up <clears throat> the other thing that they did yesterday is they put a top on the double t scoreboard and it looks it looks really cool uh it's a it's a texas tech top it says it's black and it says texas tech on it so it gives just a, a nice little uh you know final like a top hat you know on somebody's on somebody's head so gives it a little extra flair uh, a little extra nice look to it so gives it a little style so it's, it's it's black with texas tech in uh in white and uh gonna look really good for all the people flying over it well people that are in the stadium too that'll be able to see it the top of it yeah you can see it in the stadium i'm not sure you can see it from my seat in the press box Oh, um, I don't know why you wouldn't be able to see it from your seat in the press box. I mean, you might. It's not higher than that. Mm, I don't know. I've I've seen one game from the press box, so I don't I don't know. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not the best to. I mean, the angle that you look down from the press box is probably not the. I mean, you're up there what twelve, thirteen stories. It's you might have to look a little bit. Might have to crook your neck just a little bit but i mean i i think it looks pretty i think it looks pretty cool uh does well, nobody nobody's saying that it doesn't look cool uh, jeff saying you can't look down on top of it yeah i've got a picture from my seat showing the scoreboard i got no shot at seeing the top of the double t and but, that's the new stadium okay hmm. it'll look really good in drone flyovers though <laughs> <clears throat> okay well I think it'll look just fine from my seat. I mean, because I sit down. Yeah. I sit but down. But you low. won't see the top of it, though. No, I'll see the Texas Tech on the top. I'll see the Texas Tech on the top. I think you two are talking about two different things. You're I talking mean, about Jeff is talking about the big the double top. T at the south end zone. Yeah, right. On yeah. the very top no, of it, I, in the back big but, part. We're not saying will you be able to see the top of the front, Chuck. You're, uh, Jeff is talking about on top of the double T, okay? Not the fr- not the highest part of the front, but the top. Oh yeah, sure, right. I agree. I agree with that. You guys are talking about two different things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
The I very, was confused at which top we were talking. Yeah, the the, the very top. Yeah, you're, you're not. You're not. You'll be able to see it if you're on a Southwest jet. Yeah, but you'll be able to see the Texas Tech there. Um, yes. <laughs> that's that's really what I was talking about. Was it? I just thought it. I just thought it looked kind of cool. I just that's that's it. Yeah, I think when you say, I, I don't know. It's just that was. Sometimes we make my head hurt. Yeah, so I I agree. Sometimes we make. Sometimes I make my own head hurt. You know. Um, so you know. So anyway, so it look it looks it looks good. They're, it's coming to a conclusion over there at Jones Stadium. Which is which is good because we're going to play football, you know, June, July, August, three months and ten days from now. Okay, it's good. Yeah, it's good. So I mean, it's it's coming fast and furious. I have a top twenty-five for you, Jamie. And when I when I look at this and I think about this, it makes me feel like well, not that anybody can win the Big Twelve, but it sure feels like that it's. Um, that there's a lot of people that could win the Big 12 this year um, because the highest ranked team uh, for the Big 12 is at uh, number nine, and that's Utah. Other teams ranked ahead of them include Georgia's number one. Um, the, uh, the number two team, according to this 24-7 sports article, is Ohio State. Texas is number three. I have a hard time believing that Texas will be number three when it's all said and done, just because they haven't proven that they can do that. Uh, Oregon is four. And then uh, Notre Dame is five. I feel the same way about Notre Dame. feels like that they're always – they're paper tigers, that they, they look really good in May, but not so much in November when it's all said and done. Uh, Ole Miss is six. Alabama is seven. Missouri is eight. They won't finish in the top 10. And then Utah, number nine. Okay. Um, and their, their big thing is their quarterback returning, Cam Rising. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the what the Big 12 schedule does for them. Is it tougher? Is it easier? All those kinds of things. Um, but you have to then go, when you look at this, t- this particular top 25, the next ranked team... Jamie, from the Big Ten, or Big 12, I should say, is at number 17, and that's K-State. So K-State's 17. Oklahoma now in the SEC is 18. And then at uh, number 19 is Oklahoma State. So you have three teams in the top 25, okay, or top 20. And then you go to Arizona, Kansas, uh, being ranked, Arizona's twenty and Kansas is twenty second. So I guess I look at this and go, doesn't just look like anybody is, with the exception of Utah, considered just a ferocious team in the Big Twelve. Is that is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so, and I, I I think that's kind of what we've all kind of thought all along, right? That there would be no clear cut and no dominant program this year. Right, right, right. So I mean that's kind of where where you stand right now when it, when it comes to basketball and I've got a basketball too early top twenty five we'll get to later but um, so the, you know the, the the biggest I guess the biggest question mark for Texas Tech right now is the healthier quarterback yeah that seems like a big one seems like a big one All right <laughs> um, let's see here this from the eight flooring center chat line from Syntex Hank I love these conversation. Somebody else says, LOL, makes my day. Somebody else says, good Lord. Somebody else says, the only problem I have with the sign is that the backside of it's blank. I think it needs to have something like home of the home of the it on it. Hey, they may not be done. You know, there may be some more work that they're doing. You know. Well, I mean, I, I don't... Um... I don't disagree with that. I guess it's a little surprising that it doesn't have anything on it, if that's the case. I've not been over there to look and see what's on the back of it. You know, the old old Double T had Red Raiders written in script on it. Yeah, I would assume that this one would would too, right? Just because it's visible. Right. So I just, like I said, I I don't, I've not, I've not gotten my hard hat out and looked over there. 
Chuck, can you go look at all your Christmas cards and see what it says on the back there for us? Jamie, as a matter of fact, what I was doing is I was <laughs> I was going to look at my pictures from the 2022. Yeah, not, your fist, not your pictures, your Christmas cards, because you claim everybody has Christmas cards. Well, they only do the front. They, they only do the card. front of that, Jamie. They do the front of that. They don't. Oh, do they the, do. They do. Don't do the back side of that. They do the. Uh, they do the. They do the front of that. Okay, and I'm sure. How did? The, with the score. With, yeah, absolutely. That make that makes sense. Yeah, with the with the score, but the, yeah. the, the, the he's talking about the back side behind, you know, where mm-hmm. you'll have the the walkway between the sports performance center and and I don't know. Like I said, I have not been over there to inspect the back side of it, but I've just I've, I've had all my eyes on the south end zone and how it looks and how the double T looks and. I've got to tell you that I'm I'm really impressed with how it all looks. I think it's going to be just outstanding. I think I think it's going to be the envy of the Big 12, Jamie. Jones Stadium will be the envy of the Big 12. Okay. With from That's a, good. from a fan standpoint and all that all that goes with it. So I I look forward to seeing how it affects the field goal kickers. When it's all closed in like that, because I think that I think it'll have a I think it'll have an effect on it when it's all said and done, and just hope it doesn't affect our guys too much. Because yeah, see on the back of it it said Texas Tech, and it also said Red Raiders written out in cursive, Jamie, and then on the top it said Jones AT and T Stadium on the back side of it, and so who knows? Maybe it will when it's all said and done. They got a, I bet it will. They got a crane up there. Will. They'll put some lettering on there and make it all look nice and special. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is brought to you by Kinetico of West Texas. All right, guys. Um, don't blame me for this. Blame Chuck. This is Chuck's fault that I'm going to ask this question. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm I'm uh I'm gonna go there. So I want you to tell me what your current prediction is for the Red Raider football season if Baron Morton's healthy, and then I want you to tell me what your prediction is if he takes less than half the snaps. I think it's I think it's pretty simple. Eight and four, four and eight. I think, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Eight and four, four and eight. That's okay. Uh, not a lot of faith in Taj Brooks. Um, I've got significantly more faith than that on the low end. Um, nine and three, eight and four. That feels right. I'm gonna also go. I'll go with eight and four there. Um, six and six, bare bones. I trust Taj to get six wins. I don't think you'll need Baron Morton to be a bull eligible team. I, I think you can rely on your running game and your defense. So, yeah, six and six. Okay, um, I'm an eight and four guy, like Chuck. I'm definitely not a four and eight without Baron. Uh, I'm. I was excited to hear how quick Coach McGuire announced that Cameron Brown had, mm-hmm. you know, had claim that number two spot. And so that gave me a little bit of confidence that, um, you know, he had, he had shown out and that he, they felt like he, there was no question he was deserving of it. Um, so I, man, I think I'm with Jeff. I think I'll, I'll let it drop to six and six, but I think I'm closer to seven and five than six and six, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go six and six. Because you feel like that uh, – Well, because I feel like you have a lot of offensive talent around him. I think the wide receiving core is mm-hmm. going to be better. I think the running game is still really good. I'd like to think your offensive line is going to be better. Um, so I, I, I feel like your wide receivers are just so much better. And then I still think you're going to be a solid defense. Whether Baron Morton's in there or not, I think you should be a good defense again. So um, I like the schedule that you have. I, I just – all of those things factor in. Okay. Hmm. But you, I mean, you feel like Cameron Brown. 
I I don't know enough about him. I mean, he was a what Division two quarterback, you know. I mean, that's a massive change from eight and four to four and eight. Yeah, no, I get it. I I, I understand your point, Chuck. That's fair. You know, I yeah. I'll, I'll but just you say- also had another guy who who took snaps last year in Big Twelve games, unfortunately, mm-hmm. you know, because of injury, and then um, and then you have a very highly regarded freshman. So that they want to keep, you know, the the freshman tag on. Although you kind of go, well, in today's today's NCAA, you know, why are you saving him for somebody else? You just use him up yourself, right? Well, I mean, you don't want to use it if you're not going to actually no, need but, him. But I mean, if 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 if, if Will if Hammond gives the best, you the yeah, if he, Baron Morton goes down and he's the best guy to win, yeah. especially if Baron Morton's not there for significant time, they're going to use him. Mm-hmm. I I got to tell you, I was, I I think I was shocked. Yeah, I was shocked when when because I thought, oh, this is just kind of a you know we're going to get the well we got to talk to everybody kind of thing. I was shocked when he said that Cameron Brown was the number two. I really was. I mean, I've been in enough of those things over the years with enough of those different coaches to go, okay, well, this is, we're going to get a, we're not going to get the answer here because it usually at the end of spring, well, we want to evaluate the tape, we want to talk to the players, we want to tell everybody our decision. But no, nope, clearly they had already done that, which I, I credit them for doing that. I credit Coach McGuire for, for being honest. But I was shocked when he said, yeah, Cameron Brown's our number two. So that was that was a little surprising to me. You know, when and then I kinda wondered, well, is Jake Strong gonna stick around? But he I mean clearly is. If um you know, that's a whole different story, right? If if Cameron Brown played a bunch this year and Jake Strong didn't then you're probably right. He probably would be. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, I think I understand when you, you sign a division two quarterback or whatever, you don't, you don't immediately think, okay, well, this is a game changer in our program. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, clearly they felt like, uh, it was a guy that would be an upgrade at the quarterback position in your, in your style. Um, the, the, the style of the offense would change too, because he would be more of a running quarterback than anything else. And so you would have a different, you would have a different look at quarterback than what you have right now. But um, let's see, a couple thoughts here from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. That's crazy. This team should be 6-6 six and six at worst without Barron. Joey has really failed if this team doesn't make a bowl game, regardless of quarterback's situation. 9-3, and 7-5, and five, or 6-6. Six and six. Um, somebody else says this. I've been able to go to watch practice. Seeing Cameron Brown practice, he looks like a stud. Ain't no Baron, but great different change of pace. Yeah, that that's kind of how I envisioned mm-hmm. him when they signed him. Mm-hmm. I thought they, he would be a guy that they would use in different packages and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. A change of pace guy. Yeah, yeah, a change of pace guy. Um, here's a question for you. Do you wish you still had Donovan Smith? Knowing what you know about Baron Morton right now, or was it you were going to lose Donovan, or you were going to lose Baron, and you made the choice of saying, "Hey, we'd rather have Baron than Donovan." Who in their right mind would say no? Well, I mean, if Who in you... their right mind would say no, I'm, I'm glad we don't. I'm, I'm, I don't wish we had Donovan Smith. My po- my question was going to be, okay, you're right, you're right about that. You're you're right. <laughs> You're right about that. Now, here's the question. Would you have chosen Donovan over Barron and let Barron transfer and go somewhere else? I would not have. You would and, not have. And I'm, I was a big Donovan Smith fan, but no, I would not have. Yeah. I thought Barron had more upside than Donovan. Yeah, I think, you're, I think you're probably right about that. I think you're probably right about that. All right, 740 this morning here on the morning drive. Thank you for being with us today on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. The boom, boom, boom is next.
your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. On Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. We come to you from the First United Bank studio and uh, getting you ready for uh, Big 12 baseball today as they're in Arlington for the Big 12 tournament. Red Raiders won't play until 7.30 tonight. That's when the first pitch is. Our coverage at 7 o'clock this evening. We'll uh, take your thoughts and comments this morning and all morning long on the 8th Flooring Center chat line. Go to double com for that or the mobile app. The Visual Edge IT hotline is open, too, at 806-771-0973. Uh, Jimmy, you last played Texas back in back in March. Um it's been it's been quite a ways uh, since you since you played Texas. A lot has a lot has happened. What um, what is different about uh, Texas Tech's baseball team today versus that that series in March in which they won the middle game on a Saturday? Uh, less pitching depth. Okay. And that's not the answer you wanted, but that's the truth. No, I was I was seeking. Truth, yeah, no, I mean, you, you wanted, I mean, we all want to, you want me to give you good news, right? But I, I really doesn't feel like there's, there's much to give. Yeah. Yeah. You played them March 8th, 9th and 10th and, uh, tech lost the, uh, the Friday night game, um, to, uh, to Texas 22 to eight. Uh, one miserable weather night with the wind blowing out. And, yeah, just and this yes. was this was in Lubbock. Won the middle game uh, seven to two, and then lost the Sunday game nine to seven. Um, yeah, Mac Mac Hewer was really good on Saturday. Yeah, so I mean, and, and he's a guy that you. Do you think he'll start a game, Jamie, or do you see him in relief this week? I, I, if you see him, I would guess, Chuck, that's hard. Um, I, I would guess a start, maybe. Maybe he's the third starter if he got to a third game. Okay, he went uh, six but, innings. But, Go ahead. But that's really a guess. Yeah. I just really don't know. He, he went six, uh, gave up three hits, two runs. They were earned, walked one, and struck out eight. Is that his best performance of the year? Yeah, absolutely. He was really good against UCF on the road, too. But, yeah, that's probably his best performance of the season. I mean, Ryan Freak came in. He gave up just a hit. Josh Sanders gave up just a hit. And you were – that's that's probably as uh, good overall day as, as the Red Raiders had, uh, maybe from a pitching standpoint this season. Um, Kyle Robinson's day uh, on Friday, I mean, it was, like you said, the weather was just – it was just awful, which we had a we've had an awful lot of awful weekends um, this spring for what for whatever reason it's just been it's just maybe been our spring to have them. I mean, this past weekend was probably as as hot a weekend as we've had all all year. I mean, it's been rainy, it's been cold, it's been windy, it's been it's just been it's just been miserable. Um, Kyle Robinson in his his outing. Uh, for the Red Raiders, he pitched three and two thirds, eleven hits, eleven runs, all of them earned. Walked three, struck out three, and was that Zane Petty's last performance this year, Jamie? In that game? Uh, no, his last performance was in a midweek. Okay, where he started an inning and walked three consecutive batters, then got a couple outs, and then he. Walked another guy, walked in a run, and then struck another guy out, and that was the end of him. Okay. Yeah, because in that game against Texas there, he went one and a third, four hits, five runs, all of them earned, walked one, and, and struck out. Struck I out. Think he got, I think he got moved out of the rotation after that point. Yeah. Yeah, so um, obviously uh, Kyle Robinson wants to have a much – much better performance uh, than he did his last time out against against Texas. Um, what is there? Is there anything substantially different about Texas since you last played them? I, I mean, I think they're they're playing their best baseball right now of the season. I, I mean, 
They've won 15 of their last 21. They've won six straight Big 12 series. They won nine out of 10 Big 12 series this year. That's really impressive. Um, here's the most impressive part, though, Chuck. In in the 10 Big 12 series they had, they went to a road match game three seven times. That's what their record is in those seven games. I'm going to guess seven and oh. Seven and zero oh in rubber match game threes. That's really impressive. Really impressive. No doubt. <laughs> but here, here's the positive thing. <laughs> okay, more times than not, it was game one that they lost. They're just four and six in series openers. So maybe they'll lose the series opener here in the Big Twelve tournament. Yeah, because they're they're gambling a little bit today, right? I mean, they're they're, they're throwing a guy that's. Not a, yeah, a weekend not, starter. They're not throwing their yeah. They're not throwing their A's. So by any stretch. Yeah. So they're 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 gambling a little bit. They're they're basically saying to you or to us, uh, our our offense is going to be better than your offense, and our guy that's going to go out and pitch, he's a lefty. And you said earlier, soft tossing left hander seems historically that. We've had a struggle hitting soft tossing left handers. I don't know if that's because trying to swing too hard or swing big or swing for the home run or it's just if it's just one of those things. Is They're it just, just crafty. They're just crafty. Yeah. Uh, and and again, he uh, he didn't dominate you by any stretch. You, you scored three runs in four and two thirds innings. So, um, and and to be honest with you, I think Tim Tadlock and Matt Gardner would have. In Texas's situation, they would have done the same thing. They wouldn't have started their ace today. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean they're the three seed. They they probably feel they're comfortably in the NCAA tournament. They might have a chance to improve their seed or their lie a little bit. Do you see the NCAA tournament sending them to College Station? I mean, I absolutely think it's possible. Sure. Do you think there'll be? Outraged by Texas or A and M by doing that, like there has been maybe for football bowl games, or does this is it less of a f- issue? I don't think they'll be outraged. No. Okay. Didn't they just play each other in the regional last year or the reg- or the year before? I'm pretty uh, sure they did in Austin. Okay, so it's it's maybe not that big, yeah. maybe not that big a deal to them. Seems like it's a bigger yeah. deal for bowl games and football than it is for baseball, uh, and probably would be for. Basketball would be a slight outrage for him. I don't think the Aggies hate playing the Longhorns as much as they hated playing the Red Raiders, who they feel like were lesser, where they had nothing to gain. Okay. Playing the Longhorns is a big name and all that good stuff. Playing Texas Tech to them was a lesser team that, again, you lose to Tech, well, you're A&M. You should never lose to Tech, right? That's how they think. And- this has been the Morning Drive Podcast. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.